everyone. <laughs> Thanks for having us here today. I wish we could be here live, but schedules didn't allow it. So you get us through video, but that's the way of the world right now. It's video conferencing. <laughs> we might do a couple dances. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, my name is Mindy Pack, and I am based out of Salt Lake City. And this is my amazing partner in crime and killer vocologist and speech language pathologist, Karen Cox. And she graciously accepted uh, the, the opportunity to come and present with you guys today on how to help mucus production in voicing and how to have healthy vocal production when you have a lot of mucus. Mm -hmm. So before we kind of get into the presentation, I would like Karen to introduce herself and kind of tell you guys a little bit about her background and then I'll tell you a little bit about my background. So there you go. Well, thanks, Vinny. I <laughs> love, I love talking about this subject. I love talking about mucus and about swallowing <laughs> and about how to help that be more efficient. Um, I am a speech pathologist. I have a clinic, a private clinic in Utah. I grew up in Iowa. I also grew up in, on the East Coast, so I kind of got a feel for what was going on all around the country. And I just, what is a passion of mine, and see, I have some mucus right now, so I'm going to try to deal with that. <laughs> uh, what's a passion of mine is that um, I really like working one-on-one -on -one with people. I've been in a lab. I've done research. I love research. Um, and I've also done some singing. I um, had had a studio uh, years ago, but I found that I really want to kind of marry the science and the art and work with people and help. So this was a great position for me. And I, I really enjoy actually working with Mindy and learning from her and her experience working with all kinds of professionals. And that's what we want to see. We want to help you get to where you want to be exactly with your voice exactly and one thing she didn't mention is that she presents all over the world in many different voice conferences so <laughs> whatever the subject is or whatever that has to do with the voice you're looking at like one of the number one voice nerds <laughs> out there <You> too. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, like i said my name is mindy pack i'm based here out of salt lake city utah i have a studio here and i also have a studio in beverly hills california um, my main thing is I am a voice coach. I travel all over the world. I work with different record labels, but I also focus in rehabilitation. I am not an SLP, but I did go back to school to become a clinical vocologist um, through the National Center of Voice and Speech. And I love helping any type of voice user. Um, I myself had a voice injury, which kind of led me on this path of becoming into uh, the rehabilitation. And I just became so passionate on helping people find the best vocal efficiency that they can they can have. And so I think that's kind of how I got approached to come in here is because of some stuff that my other partner, um, based out of Atlanta, we were doing some Instagram stuff and we started talking about straw phonation and how that can help with uh, mucus and then also healthy vocal production. So we'll talk about that later. But anyway, without further ado, let's talk about mucus and what the snot <laughs> and how I love mucus <laughs> and how we can have the best vocal production possible. So, all right, let's get ready, shall we? We were asked to talk about how to have healthy voice function for people that are suffering with cystic fibrosis because of the mucus component, constantly clearing your throat. And about for about three years, I've been developing a product, which we'll talk about later, which actually helps us put us into an optimal voice positioning. Um, but before we start, we're going to talk about mucus, which I'm sure all of you guys are pretty much aware of, but some different techniques that can help us swallow. Um, getting the clearing of the mucus so that we can have healthy voice production. So, mm -hmm. sound good to start? Sounds awesome. I right. love talking about mucus. <laughs> well, we wanted to name this What the Snot, but we didn't know how, <laughs> how everybody would feel about that. But let, we're going to share our, the screen so you guys can kind of see a little bit of a PowerPoint presentation. You'll see us kind of up in the corner kind of bantering, bantering back and forth, but uh, let's, get, uh, let's get going. So, um, here we go. So obviously, mucus and how to have healthy vocal efficiency with a lot of mucus. Um, obviously, you already met both Karen and I, and um, I'm going to take this over to Karen so she can kind of talk about what you're seeing and all of that. Great. So what I want to talk a little bit about is when we're talking about this, this area of our neck, which is where we're going to kind of focus, because that's where you actually 
plum mucus. That's a, it's a plumbing issue. It's how do we, when we produce mucus in the throat, it can come from above, it can come from the sinuses, it can come from the nasal passages and drip down, or you can also get material that comes from the lungs and it, you have cilia that builds up and gets onto the vocal fold so that you can clear the lungs, especially when you're sick. Like if you have a bronchitis or you have a viral infection or you have this mucus in your lungs that you all um, experience that you gotta get out. And it's, it's a, it can be a challenge, especially if it's thick and it's difficult to move. So there's some great things that we can do to plumb that mucus, get the, get the system plumbing, everything working the way it should. And one, um, a couple things from this diagram that I wanna point out is this constricted part of our body, the most constricted part of our body, it's, it's made up of, of half of it's taken up by the spine which you can see there in that diagram. And so in this little tiny area in the front, you have your airway, you have your food tube, which is the tube back behind it here. And that's kind of a collapsible tube that goes to your stomach. You have your thyroid, you have all your arteries, veins and nerves going through this area too. And that, that it, that's a, it's prime real estate in there. There is a lot going on there. And there's a really, um, I think, quite an, a, a wonderful design in keeping the two tubes, the airway tube and the food tube, which is behind it, keeping those two separate. And it all has to do with your swallow function. Now, keep in mind, this area also is connected to a brain. <laughs> and so the brain has the ability to send nerves to specific muscles to do specific things in the right order and um, to provide the strength needed to move material from your tongue and, and the roof of your mouth to your esophagus um, and down to your stomach. And that's really the way that we are supposed to kind of get rid of material that we don't want in the mouth and in the throat. Now, when we do that, um, if, if we have things that are on the vocal folds, like that cilia that, that comes and brings, brings the mucus up to the vocal fold area, that's when you're going to really feel things because there's lots of sensory nerves in this one triangle, this very sacred triangle, which we're going to just kind of show you with the mouth. So it's really just this uh, from the top of the epiglottis, that's the lid to the voice box. I'll talk about that in a little minute. And then that goes down to the vocal fold area and then the vocal folds cross over and then you're back up. Okay, so this little tiny area, that's where mucus, it's really sensitive when it's in that area. And that cilia brings it up and then you start noticing it. You start noticing, oh, there's, do I have a tickle in my throat? Does my voice sound a little wet? Um, it just feels like something is there. Now, that sends a message to the brain that says, hey, that's not supposed to be there. It's dangerously close to the lungs. I don't, I, if it's coming up, I want to get rid of it. And, or if it's coming down and it's kind of dripped from the sinuses or dripped from the nose, then that you also want to get rid of that. Or if you have a little like acid come in, you want to, and that could come from the stomach, a little burp or something. That all is going to be felt. And what the body does, it says, well, um, I've got to get rid of it, so I'm going to bang those vocal folds together. And that posturing is great to get rid of mucus, but it's not a great posture, which Minji's going to talk about long term. It's something that we need. We need it for when we're when we need to expel something out. But it isn't a very efficient posture for voicing, or if you need to use your voice and you have a demand to use your voice that's not really the best posture for that and we'll talk about that a little bit later so are you meaning like a cough like that's the signal that comes down for it or like what, yeah. what is tell us what so that the, posturing looks that like that posture is a posture that's very um more concerned with banging and getting rid of kind of a posterior posture and it's very kind of what we call a convergent shape it's just, it's just thinking, I've got to get rid of something. So I'm going to push as much air as I can to get rid of it and bang it. Now, the interesting thing about swallowing 
is, and I'm, I just want to describe a little bit more about swallowing. If you look at your tongue, the tongue, which right we're here, yep, that air, look how big that muscle is. That's a huge muscle. It's much bigger than the other muscles that are underneath it, that those muscles are, are muscles important for swallowing too, because they bring, when they contract, they bring the whole voice box that we've been talking about, this area, forward, okay, because when they contract, it brings it forward, and then there's muscles on the side, which we'll, we'll get to that. Why don't we show that uh, picture real quick? Sure, this one? Yeah, all these muscles on the side, when they contract, that brings that voice box up. So we have a motion of bringing the, the, the voice box or the larynx up and forward when we swallow. And those muscles contract in order for us to do that. There are a lot of muscles there. Some of those muscles um, kind of sling to the hyoid bone, which is above the larynx. And it's that right is, here. yeah. And they sling up to your eustachian tube, which opens up your, um, it kind of pops your ears and helps with ear health. And then these muscles also, they love to contract, but they rarely relax. And I want you to think about where, in what kind of situation would they relax? And um, a lot of people wonder about their yawn. Like, why do I yawn? It's kind of contagious sometimes. I'm gonna yawn and, right now. Yeah, well, even when you think about yawning, <laughs> why am I yawning? You know, what am I getting? Am I getting oxygen when I yawn? And that's been actually disproven. You don't get that much oxygen when you yawn. When you yawn, it's not because you're bored or because you're tired. It's because these muscles need to stretch. They sometimes never get an opportunity to do that. And when they're up and tight, they need to stretch like any other muscle in our, in our body. We need to go to extremes and stretch them in order to get the full range of motion and know where we're the strongest in the middle. So a yawn is a perfect way to stretch these muscles that like to contract for swallowing. Okay, now let's go back to that first slide. And what's important here is just think for a minute when this is, okay. Yep. When you have what's called a bolus or something that you're trying to swallow, even with, if it's mucus in your mouth that you're trying to get rid of, you create and, and trap it at the roof of your mouth. Whether or not you realize you do that, you do. <laughs> is that same and, with mucus that would come up from the lungs too? No, sometimes that mucus is going to just kind of sit in the back portion of, the sorry, That's can okay. you see my pointer? This back portion of the larynx right there. So the cilia goes up and then it goes to the kind of the front and then it moves to the back on the false vocal folds, which are the folds lateral or to, to the side of the true vocal folds. Which we'll show you later. Yeah. <laughs> So those false vocal folds bring the cilia to the back or bring that mucus, the cilia brings it to the back. And that's when we really start to notice that we have something there. You know, that there's, there's something that changes in our voice quality. But there is a way to get rid of that. I'm gonna talk about that, but I would like to go back to yes. the swallow function because when we create that bolus, okay, just think about this. You have 12 cranial nerves. In order to swallow, you have to activate six of them, half of them, in one second. I mean, that's, that's a, incredible. The, just think about the muscle coordination that needs, that's required to get that bolus or whatever is at the roof of your mouth mm -hmm. and trapped by your tongue back down to your stomach in one second. So it's gonna go right in that direction, mm -hmm. okay, down this tube. So the things that happen is this palate is going to close off because we all know we know when we've laughed or something and we've tried to swallow at the same time and we get something in our nose, it doesn't feel so great. <laughs> so that's got to close, okay? And that produces a great, great pressure there. Another thing that happens is that those muscles that I, I showed in that other picture, they all contract. They're on the side and under the tongue, and they're going to bring this whole voice box up and forward. Now, what's really incredible is the voice box has this lid. And when this comes up and forward, this lid inverts or it closes, kind of like a, almost like a toilet lid. Yeah, so if it's here, it's like, <laughs> it's like yeah, yep, it comes in 
and it just covers those vocal folds. So those vocal folds, well, they're actually going like, okay, they're going like this, opening and closing like this, and that lid comes over and seals and, and protects them, okay? And, but it comes, at the same time, it comes up under the tongue. So it makes a nice little, go back, sorry. Mac. It makes a, <laughs> a nice little funnel. So right here, it looks like there's places where it can get caught, like right here, where mucus can kind of build up and get caught, or pills could get caught, or things that you swallow could get caught. But when it inverts, it makes a funnel. It makes a nice little... Um, uh, way for that tongue to squeeze against the back wall and for for that that back end of this to squeeze and then this area right here opens up and now that that voice box is out of the way and it's forward so this has room to open and everything squeezes down they call it peristalsis and it squeezes to your stomach the reason I share that with you is because if that doesn't work in the right order and has enough strength, you're going to get streaks. You're going to get things that get caught and it's not very efficient. There's a really great efficient way to swallow mucus that's in your throat and that is to tuck your chin and help those muscles that need to move out of the way so that funnel can be made so that can invert. So when those move out of the way, you, you get a good swallow. If you tuck your chin, you're helping that out. If your chin is back like this, if we throw pills back or we try to swallow like this, that thing doesn't get a chance to invert because it's kinked. It doesn't have it, it just goes up against the back wall and it leaves a great big cavity for things to get caught. But if we give it room to invert and tuck our chin, okay, then it goes down beautifully. It strips down much like, I don't know if you've ever tried to clean windows with a squeegee, you know, that squeegee and that thing that, that you go down to make it nice and clean. If you don't put enough strength or you start at the bottom, you're gonna get streaks. If you start at the top and you squeegee down, all that material just cleanly goes down the right way. And that's efficient. So we want to make sure that if you are going to clear your throat and that stuff gets on your vocal folds, do it in a nice conducive way for healing. You don't want to bring a lot of bang into it because a lot of bang is going to create more irritation, which is going to create more mucus. And then you're going to have to clear that mucus and then your bang. So we want to kind of stop that cycle. And if you can use your air, as much air as you can and do a that's gonna blow that mucus up just a few millimeters. You're gonna tuck your chin right after. Kind of like a bird, did you see that? Yeah, I call it a turtle. Or a turtle, yeah. Yeah, then it's gonna strip down, squeegee down beautifully, and it's gonna be efficient. So you don't have to create any more trauma or create a lot of work. We'd like the work to be with air rather than lots of muscle work, okay? So um, I wanna go over that again. Just yeah. so that we can go through yeah. that. Yeah. So if they're if they're having a lot of mucus that's coming up and it's sitting low, maybe not draining from the top. But coming from below. Coming from low from the lungs, which is a standard thing with with, cystic yeah, yeah. with CF. So if it's coming up and it's sitting there and they're clearing the throat, we all know what that is, is that <clears throat> down in there or the or they like <laughs> choke really? it up really, yeah, like yeah. waddling. If it's really effortful, that's probably not wise. But if you use a lot of air and go that's going to be much more effective than because <clears throat> that's like uh, sandpaper. That is like sandpaper tight. Banging hard. So try it. Everybody take a second yeah. and just kind of try that whole feeling of blowing up that air. So fill your tummy up. <sighs> <sighs> that's you want to use that air. <sighs> blowing that air out. <sighs> and then tuck your chin and then and yeah. turtle it. Now I can feel my tongue kind of going up in the back and kind of like feel like it's peeling everything off. Is that a normal Yeah, feeling? you want your tongue to be a part of this. Yeah. It very much needs to be a part of it because remember it's going up against the back wall to help squeegee and that and bring the that stuff down and move it. So you That's want kind of a your cool tongue to dance be. move. Maybe yeah. we should try that. <laughs> Turtle. <laughs> 
go together. <laughs> Sorry, go. I'm a nerd. <laughs> go so, through that, but yes. Yeah, that's really, really a great thing to really strengthen those muscles. That's when you want to strengthen those muscles. But then remember, when you do strengthen those, that you kind of need to make sure that they release again, right? That they can't stay tight all the time. So you're really, you're tightening them. You're getting them to work really well, and that's going to move everything down really well and down the right way. But then afterwards, you want to make sure that you have some relaxation, right? And you open that airway up again. Okay. Now, one of the way to do a relaxation too, which we can talk about later, but um, like in coaching and in rehabilitation, that I talk a lot about a dumb, dopey kind of sound. That's mm -hmm. that yawn. Yeah. So if you don't can't make yourself yawn. Um, I want everybody to kind of grab their throat for a second, mm -hmm. okay? We're gonna go through it again later. But if you were to kind of grab Adam's apple slightly up, but kind of pant like you're a tiny little dog, and then you prefer to pant like you were a huge lion. Ooh, it goes down. You can kind of feel that mm. elongation and yeah. open. So I always call, I call it a dumb kind of dopey silly sound too if I had a voice on that like, hello, here mm. it is. So that's another way of kind of getting in there if you're trying to get that to relax down there is that. Yeah. So another great thing to do too is to stretch underneath the tongue. Sometimes our jaws and things get kind of tight and it's really good to kind of stretch under there and make sure that, yeah, those are loosening up too because they're that big point right here. Those muscles can get really tight underneath the tongue. And so it's good to kind of release those. But let me tell you one more thing. You know, people in space, they don't have gravity, right? And they can still swallow. They can still eat. Have you ever tried to swallow upside down? Give it a try. You can still do it. <laughs> so it's all about these muscles controlling that material. It has nothing to do with gravity. You can do a swallow anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's reassuring, you know, because when you feel like, oh, you got all this stuff in there, what am I going to do? Well, there's a really great thing you can do. You can give what I call a blowfish some back pressure to those vocal folds and test them. Test them to see if they're working. If they're working, you can hear sound. And if you've got that back pressure, you know you're not banging hard, but you're still hearing sound. Then right after you do that, do a slow sniff in. Now that's very relaxing. That will relax that larynx too. See what happens is that we have this lot of muscle contraction, but if we can get that to unpress a little bit and vibrate, we can test whether or not we got mucus on there. And if you can sustain that sound, you don't have mucus there. You may feel you do, but the cilia hasn't brought it up yet, okay? So why go through so much effort, you know? if you still need that cilia to kind of bring it up. So let it bring it up, do a little air <sighs> to help bring right it here. up. <laughs> yeah, and if, you, if you've if you got it right there, then you do it, you test. If it stops, oh, I got some there. Then that's when you do that, <sighs> gone. Cool. You know you're clean. <laughs> you don't have anything on the vocal folds, and you don't have anything going down the in the in the throat either. It's all stripped down just like you want it. Cool. And same okay. thing, mucus coming up. Yeah. That would be the same thing. Mucus so if all of a sudden up. you're super congested, I guess, I don't know what the right term would be, but super mucusy on there, you would feel that doing that blowfish as well. <sighs> yeah. And then test it again. I'm okay. Especially if you're presenting and you're on stage or you're in front of a microphone and you're like, oh my gosh, is that mucus gonna come again? What am I gonna do? Well, while someone else is talking or in the middle of your talk, if you just, nobody's gonna know you're doing it. Honestly, it's a lot softer than a, <coughs> kind of thing, right? <laughs> so if you can, you can know, and your body will know because you've practiced it. You've got to practice this because honestly, our muscles go what we, to the place that we practice. 
and you've practiced coughing and throat clearing, you've got that down. You know how to do that. So what I want you to do is practice the semi-occlusion. So this pressure is going back to those vocal folds and getting them from st stopping banging to a nice easy vibration. And then slow sniff in. That's a reflex, you can trust it. It's gonna pop those suckers wide open. Okay, all right. I'm gonna hand the reins oh. over. So we talked about semi occlusions, <laughs> let's go right into it. What is in here? And the one thing I wanna caveat with that too, is that that puff of air, that it's not coughing. It's no. totally different from that. And that's something that I think some people get confused on is when they go through this is all of a sudden they're like, and they're like, coughing with it or like grinding in there it is just air and coughing and throat clearing boy that can easily become a habit where it's really not needed but it's it's something that you, it's almost like a tick like <clears throat> we're doing it all the time <clears throat> and we don't even realize it you know what I could find I'm sorry if this is sharing too much information you're good <laughs> but my mother we would I have two autistic nephews and they talked about running away all the time you know, um, especially in the mall and how frustrating that was. And I said, well, mom, and she said, you guys ran away from me all the time. Like, that's not that odd. And we'd like, yeah, but mom, we knew where you were because all we had to do was wait a second or two and you'd throw clear. And we always knew where mom was. We never worried about losing mom. Even in a dark movie theater, I could find her. <laughs> because I knew she was gonna cough or, or throat clear in just a second or two. And she didn't even realize she was doing that. She's like, I don't do that. I'm like, mom, you do. And so we started snapping our fingers every time she's throat cleared. And we didn't wanna harp on her or bug her, but we just wanted to help her identify how often that happened. And so I taught her this and she was like, I didn't realize how much effort I was using every day to mm -hmm. do that when I didn't need to. So you'll know when you need to by testing. Am I good? I'm good. I'm not good. I'm good. Awesome. Okay. So one of the things when we were, when I got asked to present on this um, was obviously vocal production. Like how can we help it? Because a lot of people have felt like when they've been pre presenting or like going in front of people, they're constantly clearing their throat or they have a loss of voice. And one of the th reasons why you would have a loss of voice is because of this collision force, is that when the cords come together and slam, um, I, how I explain it is it's almost like sandpaper rubbing kind of on the cords. And so we wanna talk about vocal hygiene of the actual vocal fold. So we talked about, you kinda saw the way the anatomy is in the larynx and, and all of that. But what are the vocal folds made up on? And one of the things that I use to explain it a lot are sausages, <laughs> okay? Is we have these two little sausages and then we have this like layer that protects it. And it, the, you know, that's the epithelium and in there. And obviously there's muscles and ligaments that are in vocal cords, but just for visual sakes, I want you to think of little sausages, okay? And when you continually slap and slam them together, what do you think happens to that outer lining of the vocal folds? I mean, it's kind, of, kind of a cool kind of analogy here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they kind of swell up and flare and, and kind of all of that. Well, guess what? What does your body send to those vocal folds in order to protect it? Mucus. <laughs> so now you're getting mucus from bottom and top. And that's, that's one thing about mucus. Like, I know it seems like it's this curse, right? And it is hard when it's thick and it's hard to move. But actually mucus it's kind of like nature's band-aid. It forms where there's irritation. And so what we care more about is what, what's the irritation? How can we help the irritation that's causing the mucus rather than, well, what can we do to dry up the mucus and get rid of it? Because you don't want dry vocal folds. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you want a layer of nice, thin, easy, movable mucus. That's okay. But it's when it's thick and it's hard to manage that it's hard. Yeah. So if you think of that constant compression and like what it does, then that's when we end up into having voice issues. And some of the, how that would manifest in sound would be, do you have a raspiness? Is it husky? Um, do you lose your voice often? Do you have projection? Can you not project? Um, 
for people who are singers? Is there a loss of range that happens? Or even in speaking, can you articulate and have presence and have this range of motion in, in pitch? And so there's certain things that will contribute to that, which could be from the constant throat clearing. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. So what I want to show you, I'm going to share the screen again, and we're going to flip through some of these slides, go mm -hmm. through here. Um, as we talked that, uh, well, I'll go back through that here in a second, is let's talk about the vocal folds. So these are obviously vocal folds. Um, what you're looking at, right side, left side, but you can see mucus right here. So you can see why this would constantly be an issue. And when I hit play, you're going to see that vibration that Karen was talking about where the chords are kind of coming together. Can I make a point here? Yeah. If you look at this other picture right here, right here that mucus is not in the airway. That mucus formed right where the vocal folds are. Yeah, you can which see. It, which is due to the irritation and the redness and the swelling that's happening there. So you can see that yeah. vibration right there, and you can see that mucus bouncing around. And why, like, I'm sure every time I see that, I'm always like, <clears throat> like clearing my own throat <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. to kind of go through there. So there's a great example of what that is looking like. Mm -hmm. And then over here, same thing. Like you can hear it going in. You can see that mucus just flopping around everywhere. That's the reason why, obviously, you'd clear your throat and why we'd have issues going forward. Yeah, but if you clear it hard, that mucus is only going to go right to the side. If you clear it with air, it's going to go up so you can swallow it away. Get yes. rid of it. Up and out. Yeah. That's what we want. Okay. So I'm going to go to the next slide. So what we're going to talk about is straw phonation. And this is really how I got asked to present here. It's because um, I believe Danielle saw some posts that my other partner, Rob Stevens, and I were posting about clearing our throat and how we kind of got it with uh, going through straw phonation. So before I kind of go into it, there are numerous research articles on straw phonation and how it helps the voice and the posturing. It is done by Dr. Ingo Titsa, who happens to also be her father. Um, good guy. He's a really good guy. <laughs> and I, I nickname him and he just giggles and gets embarrassed, the godfather of straw. <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't like to be called that, but <laughs> we all kind of think it. But I have to. <laughs> But if you go to PubMed, if you guys aren't familiar with that um, kind of database for science research articles, and you can put in um, articles on any kind of topic. And I found some really interesting articles on CF actually through there. But we're going to really just kind of focus on the, the voice production and healthy production of the voice. But you could look in there and see stuff for straw. Um, but he's been doing this for over uh, 20 years. There's over 500,000 views on YouTube. It's crazy. I mean, there's just, if you want to really like nerd out, go there <laughs> um, through there but Karen was talking about this back pressure and when I first started doing voice stuff and a lot of times in my own studio when I talk to people nobody knows what that is or what that feels like there's a term that's called inertance and what that is is it's good energy and when we're doing any sort of vocal production whether it's in speech or singing you want to have this good energy so that we have effortless sound versus effortful sound would that be explained correctly? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. And so we talked about convergent and divergent shapes. And what that means is when you saw on the vocal cord videos, you saw how there's a wave that kind of came from bottom, bottom to top. When we're in a convergent shape, that's the shape of the vocal folds. And then you have a divergent shape, that's the shape of the vocal cords. So that you have that wave movement where you're having the air come up and energy kind of sucking it back down. Am I explaining this in yeah, a way that's so that, easy? Yeah, that, that those two different shapes, they, that's what sustains their phonation. And that's what, that's what gives us sound. Mm -hmm. um, but it's needed to have those two different shapes when air goes through, otherwise it wouldn't keep going, okay? They need those two shapes to keep the sound going. Just like you need to be on a swing, which I'm sure you're gonna- Yeah, go for it. Okay. Yeah, go for it. Swing. Just like you need to be in two different positions on a swing. You need to go back and forth, back. It's all oscillation, right? The back and forth. That's what sustained vibration is. And what's really cool is what Mindy's gonna talk about, this extra energy that is kind of like the little lady there <laughs> kicking her legs to help keep that swing going. So you don't have to keep pushing someone on a the swing. They can start being part of the swing. 
and they can give a little extra extra energy to the system. Exactly. So it's kind of like that. So what inertance is, is this energy. When you're swinging on the swing and all of a sudden you kick really hard and you go whoosh and you go even higher and then you don't have to really worry about it, but you have that momentum going. Or if you're on a trampoline and you're bouncing with somebody and you hit it just right and they go whoosh and they soar, that's kind of what we want to have in all sort of vocal um, production is we want to have that energy source matched. So again, it's effortless instead of you guys having a lot of effort in voicing. So we're going to talk a little bit. So I developed this um, product called the voice straw and it was through many years of, of studying in that. But through the science articles and, and through the education that I had, you can, by going through a, a, a tube of some sort or, or the straw, what you're doing, and this is, you know, clearly stop and help me out here if we need to, <laughs> but we have all this energy. We have the breath that kind of goes through there. So we're kind of regulating what that flow is like, but because it's going through a smaller opening instead of bah, and opening our mouth, we're getting this pressure that kind of comes back. So we have this good pressure that kind of comes back down the vocal cords, kind of marries with the air so we can go through it. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's really great. I, the, the really cool thing about having long, narrow tubes is, um, if it's okay, I'd like to give this example. Sure. I used to do a lot of research in the lab, and believe it or not, we had to use some animal models of real tissue, and we put we put the vocal folds in their perfect position, you know, just right so they could get that nice convergent, divergent shapes right, right at the perfect um, place where it's not too pressed so it didn't take so much air, but it also wasn't too breathy, right? So we found that perfect position and then we put, we found out how much air was required for that to get that, keep, to keep going. Then we put something like a tube, like this, this narrow tube right on top and all of a sudden we could turn down the air we didn't have to re it didn't require as much air when there's a tube on top when it's just open to the air we had to keep that air going but when we put a tube there we were able to dial it down why it's pretty amazing it has something to do with that inertance that extra energy that feeds back to those vocal folds and helps them vibrate so that that flow it affects the flow so that we don't have to push so much air and i know when you're like trying to present something isn't it awful when you feel like you're working so hard and you have to breathe all the time and you're pushing all this air wouldn't it be nice to just be in that perfect position all the time so that you don't have to push so much perfect yeah. good it? good so one thing that we want to do is not one size fits all for every single person um, everybody, because we're dealing with human flesh, human anatomy, things can change all the time based on what your own tissue is looking like. If you've been coughing, if you've been intubated, mm -hmm. yep, mm -hmm. could be something. Mm -hmm. If you've, um, women, if you're on your menstrual cycle, um, if you've been laughing or crying or whatever, mm -hmm. the size of the hole of whatever tube you use matters. Okay. So that's why you want to play around with this and we're going to talk about how you actually use straw phonation to find what that match is but what we want to do is find that optimum size so that you feel your throat kind of in its position this opening up and you feel that back pressure kind of going in in a really healthy way and again it's, it's always going to change it's going to, it's going to depend on, on what that is sometimes when you use a straw or like when um, even any sort of semi occluded vocal tract exercise. And when we say semi-occluded, that's when everything's kind of shut down so you're not opening your mouth all the way, is you'll, you'll, you may hear the term resonance. And what resonance is, is it's kind of a byproduct of kind of what this energy is. And you can feel it anywhere. So I'm sure if you're a singer or, or if you've done any sort of acting lessons or anything like that, you'll hear a term of like chest voice and head voice. Well, what does that mean? So a lot of times people feel a vibration down here when they're talking a little lower, or they may feel the vibration up as they go higher up into scales or higher into pitch. But that is all relative to the person and, and what their own anatomy is like. But you may start to feel vibration or lip buzzing around in your lips or your cheek or your head or anything like that. 
and that that's a good thing we want to we want to have that so don't freak out if you like all of a sudden go through it and you're like what the heck i can feel this or, or my I'm, nose tickles oh no yeah my lips <laughs> my lips are having my lips. Issues. yeah that's the, that's supposed to happen that's um fine. yeah so we have to we want to make sure that we go through that um so this is me singing actually and what you're going to be looking at is into the actual vocal tract and i want you to kind of look at this different posturing and positions that that are going on obviously i don't i don't think i have i have mucus a lot but i don't have mucus in this one so you don't have to see that but i want to show you what it is that straw does so that then you can kind of have it in your head of what we're trying to achieve um, for this sort of thing all right so So I'm going to pause it right there. So this is the same song. You can obviously, this is without straw and this is with straw. I kind of have some mucus. You can see it right there <laughs> going through there, but you can kind of see how this whole track kind of comes into place. These are arytenoids. I'm kind of coming in and then you see this posturing in the back. So where Karen was talking about how kind of the trachea a little bit moves forward, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where the, the, well, when you're using the straw, the larynx comes down and you get a much more open configuration. Yes. Where, yeah. So it's kind of that same, the, the posturing that we have. This is what we want to have for healthy vocal production. We want to try and create this space so there's space for everything to kind of go into play. We don't need to listen to everything singing. I just wanted to show you the difference. <laughs> it's really cool because look at all the work there as opposed to kind of a more relaxed, more efficient with the straw. And what's really cool is what it happens. Oh, do you do it right oh, after? No, we can do it here. No, oh. you can show it again. Talk about it. Yeah. So there's some a lot of squeeze and tightening, which, I mean, she's got a gorgeous voice, right? And some of that is for the color of her voice. But um, I know because I've seen Mindy after she uses the straw, and that tightening seems to just be much more symmetrical and it's more flexible. Um, so that's what's really cool is that if she wanted to have a voice that was really bright, she could do it. She can contract muscles to do that. But then if she wants to put a little vibrato in there or if she wants to change the voice, she has the flexibility to do that because she's used the straw to kind of balance those things and stretch those muscles and allow for more options in her voice. Yeah, exactly. That's where it's going to go to. <laughs> so next slide so how to straw so let's try and figure this out here for a minute so obviously at the beginning we did the whole dog pant thing and when we start doing any sort of vocal exercises whether it's any sort of warm-up you want a neutral larynx you don't want to start in a high position and you don't want to start super extreme low and so i want you to again try this again so you're going to grab where the larynx is adam's apple right there you're going to pant like you're a tiny little chihuahua and that you should feel it kind of raise up and kind of tighten up in there. Now pant like you're that huge St. Bernard and you'll feel it drop and expand. So I'll always have any of my speakers, my voice users, whatever, do that. And then I'll have them say bubble, bubble, bubble. That's where I want you to start. Okay. So we're going to start, obviously got to love the PowerPoints where it's, click 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 <laughs> going through there but i want everybody to try that so just do that one more time again <sighs> bubble bubble oh. there's our neutral larynx okay so one way if you don't have a straw that you can do this to is a lip buzz um i always take two fingers i put them right here at the front of my first set of molars not super far back and you don't want to pinch your lips together okay it's a gentle lift up and you're just going to slowly blow out air. Okay. Now you can create a voice on that. So you can hum it with it. But I want you to listen to the difference. If I were to have my larynx in that high chihuahua sound. Now, if I were to have it in the low larynx or the low St. Bernard tiger sound, if I went high chihuahua to bubble, that's where I'd want to work through that. Same thing with the straw. Okay. 
So in our kind of in our kit, and I'm just going to kind of go through this here for a minute, so I can watch it. Nope. Go back. So in our kit, we it comes with four different sizes, and that's because as we talked earlier, you need to have different sizes to kind of play around with it. I'm going to start with one that I lovingly call Big Betty. It's the fatter one of all of them. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to wrap your lips around it kind of tight. Okay. You're going to blow out air. Okay. Make sure no air is coming out of your nose. We don't want that to leak. Now I'm going to do a gentle whoop like I'm starting a cold car. So I'm going to go like a Okay, this makes me run out of air really fast because of how big it is. I feel like I'm like <sighs> exhausted after that with, with running out of air. If this is too easy for you, which it is for me, um, you're going to kind of go to a different size, size straw. So I'm going to go to a different size straw, and I want you to listen to the difference of the two. Okay, so I have or I don't know if you can hear the difference, but I can feel a difference. And what I feel is I feel my throat kind of opening up and I kind of feel this really awesome back pressure that's in there. It does not hurt. And nothing of this should ever hurt. If all of a sudden you're like squeezing and you can feel pain, it's wrong. Okay, so that's one thing to get out at the gate. But we can play around with these different sizes to see which one matches. This one was too big for me, but for someone, say, maybe who when they're singing and they're super tight and compressed or somebody who talks with a lot of squeeze or a lot of effort, they need the bigger size to this. If somebody feels like they're really breathy and this is really breathy going in, you may need to jump down to the smaller size. So it's all about kind of figuring out what is the configuration that works. So I want to add into that. Yeah, and you can always uh, use the, I like the length of this bigger straw and the length of one of the smaller straw too, because then you can, I don't know if you're going to talk about putting it in water. Yep, we're going to talk But that's a really great way to kind of watch bubbles. You know, when we're kids, our, our moms say, don't blow bubbles in your milk. But right? we did it anyway. That's <laughs> It's really good. It, it allows us to see air. And so when we can see air, then we can see what is, what's really going on while we're doing these different tasks. And it should be pretty consistent. I'm sure you're going to talk about yep. that. Yep. Yeah. So this is like one of the things that I always ask myself. What is it that you're feeling in your throat? And if it feels, do you feel it, is it too easy or do you feel squeezed? And that's where we kind of play around with the different size straws. So the thing you're looking for is that back pressure. You should feel it be like, woo, and all of a sudden settle in there. So I call it frog throat. You can see that picture. <laughs> is you feel that kind of expansion, um, expansion kind of going down in there. So certain exercises you could do are just those basic pitch glides. So if I was getting ready to walk out and present or have a conversation, even just to warm up my voice during the day, if I'm talking on the phone, I mean, everything right now is online anyway, so we're constantly talking. Um, if I'm yelling at my kids, <laughs> you know, or just kind of like reestablishing vocal hygiene, I'll do that throughout the day. It doesn't need to be long. It just needs to be one or two, two minutes, if that, just to reset that posturing. It's really amazing if you had this huge coughing attack and you're coughing, 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 and you swallow it, reposition it, reposture it so that you're not moving forward on a vocal limp, so to speak. You know, when we sit there and cough or we have this effortful speech or sound, it's kind of like you're walking with a rock in your shoe. Like all of a sudden your whole body changes kind of that gait and that configuration. So after you do something that's like a heavy work day or you have a meeting or, or anything like that, you're so tired. <laughs> I do that with my posture. I'm terrible with my posture. I see myself in the mirror and I'm like, wait, that's really what I look like? Sit up and tall. And then I, I'm like, oh no, I don't want to, but I get tired and fatigued, you know, and we don't, we don't walk the way we normally would if we were kind of stretched. And that's what's really great is this is kind of like a reposturing. It gets, puts everything back in that nice, easy position again. Yep. Exactly. So here's some tips. So your voice is gonna is a moving target, like we talked about. Allergies in the air, pollution, talking all day, on your period, medication even will have a voice of can have effects on your voice. Um, and so you want to make sure that you play around with that. A simple a simple straw 
regardless if you get this kit or not, but a simple straw, when you find that right diameter, it makes a huge difference in the efficiency and the effect that you can have in your voice. So just know that it's, it's constantly moving. And so you want to play around with that all the time. Um, we already went through that. We went through that. Okay. Well, well we don't need to read you again because we just went through it again. Clearly we talk about this a lot. <laughs> um, perfect. Okay. So we're going to talk about water. So obviously I have my water cup here with a normal size straw. When you add water, it gives us another form of, of pressure. It gives us another form of resistance that we can, we can go through. This is also, I use these for all singers, all speakers that we're using in, in for rehabilitation, um, anything like that. But if you put the straw in the water, again, like Karen said, you can see the bubbles, you can actually see the airflow and you want it to be consistent. So you would just do your gentle, gentle little lip buzz or lip glides in there, wrap the lips around it tight. I personally like to puffy out my cheeks, so it's fun. Now, I don't feel a lot of back pressure in there because this straw is too big, but I'm going to pinch it. I'm going to pinch off some of that, that pressure in there. I get all of a sudden went whoop and felt it. So see if you can hear that difference. I can now hear it. There's a definite feeling change that happens. So can I give a little plug yeah. for your kit yeah. too? So what she just did by pinching the straw, she made it really easy for you too. Is so she's got the big Bertha, right? Big Betty. Big Betty. Sorry. That's all right. Bertha's and good then, too. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then she has the smaller one. So if when you're ready to pinch and you go to a small to get a, a more resistance in the water, it's long enough that you can put that in. You know, like a cup with a lid, and use use these in water too. Yep. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. So in our kit too, this is something that would is is so awesome. Is people are like, well, I can't talk with the straw in my mouth. Obviously, when you talk and move, the track changes. What you saw in the in the scope before, how the straw put the positioning in, and then when I was singing, you could see kind of that articulation in the different configurations. But what we have found is by putting a straw inside a cup, you can then work out or practice your presentation or get your speech or song in its right spot. So by putting this tightly against your mouth, the straw doesn't go in your mouth. And you can, again, if you don't have this kit, you can use a normal styrofoam cup. You just need to have it sealed tightly against your mouth. But what you do is you take this here and I'm going to use the phrase, I'm going to actually sing because it's been a long day. I've been, let's see, school where it's been probably a 15 hour day and we're <laughs> filming this. So I'm a little vocally tired. So you're going to hear this difference. But if I were to sing something where I'm like, um, Star Spangled Banner, for instance, and I was going to go into, and the rocket's regular. Okay. So I'll just sing it for you. So you, we, well, we'll try it. Maybe you won't hear anything, but I, I bet you will. So if I were to sing, and the rocket's regular. feel like I'm working for that. Okay. So if I wanted to kind of warm up my voice and I, I do this with people who are speakers who are getting ready to walk out ministers, preachers, um, radio hosts, radio DJs who are lawyers. just, yes, lawyers. Yes. Yeah. Anybody yeah. that's talking a lot, this helps them. So if I were to take this and I would then put this around my mouth, the straw does not go in my mouth, but because we're adding this too, we're, we're still elongating the vocal tract so we get that awesome back pressure. Tight seal. If you can hear this echo, that's not a tight seal, but if it's super muffled, muffled, then I know I got the seal. So, and I love it because I sound like a 14 year old little boy going through puberty. So I know it's changing the shape and it's putting that posturing in its right spot. Can I make a comment about it? A lot of people, when they use the straw, they use the cup and they say, oh, I'm getting some voice breaks or, oh, this sounds different. It sounds like, you know, it's not what I want, the sound. That's the point. It's supposed to change things. 
And that change is magical. And you'll see the minute you don't use the cup, how magical that is. But don't be afraid that it's going to feel different. It's supposed to feel different. Yeah. And the cracking is normal. Yeah. But, I mean, you can already hear my voice different in just speech from just doing yeah, that for a second. Yeah, just improved it. Yeah. So here. a big difference mm -hmm. effortless you could hear the ring it sounded more rich you know everything kind of pinged into place and she only had to do that a few seconds yeah easy so if i was walking out on stage or say i was trying to project or you know like a, a lawyer and i had to like be convincing to the jury or whatever and i was talking with a lot of energy and you want that ping yeah in your voice i would do this so like say the phrase is Hey, how are you guys? How are you doing today? If I was walking out on stage and I, I you know, obviously as a presenter, I want to be animated. I don't want to have like, hey, how are you guys doing today? But I'm going to come out and be like, hey, how are you guys doing today? <laughs> or, like, or what I do when I'm really vocally tired at the end of the day. Hey, how are you guys doing? It Talking sounds like I'm sick. You know, it sounds like, man, what's wrong? Do you have a cold? I don't have a cold. We call that yeah. the Kardashian effect. Yeah. Or at the, least uh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Talking <laughs> right. But I would take the phrase, hey, how are you guys doing? Hey, how are you guys doing today? Hey, how are you guys doing today? Hey, how are you guys doing today? I can have that ping and that brightness to go through it. So it's a great way to practice longevity. It's a great way to practice presence and resonance and be conviction. I mean, when your voice is confident and you're stepping out on that stage and you have that power, you are telling a story. You are the conviction that you have with your audience. Everybody's going to be like, I believe. And they're going to go through it. That's what we want. When we, we want to have that confidence. And when our voice is in that position, the confidence that comes out of there, game changer. Yeah. And if you notice that, that, that she's not afraid of the mucus either. That's like so out of her thoughts because it's all about that efficiency in the voice. Yep. And the mucus is dealing with itself, right? And you know how to deal with it if it comes into there, but it wasn't even near um, a problem nope. for you. And already like, and it gave you confidence. Yep. And I'm glad you could see that because you yeah. could go back and watch this video and hear my voice and speech not then. If you rewind it and come back to where it is now, it's different. Like, and I can feel it. Like, I feel like I could talk another 10 hours and be fine. So anyway, that's kind of where we're going to kind of stop on here. It's kind of these little things. So let's kind of review a couple things just as kind of the, the, the flow out. Mucus production comes down. It's sitting in the cords or it's coming up and it's sitting there. And you just feel like you need to clear your throat. What do you do? Yep. Blowfish. Inhale through your nose. Test it again. Puff the air. Turtle, swallow. So there's one of the swallowing techniques. So obviously, voicing production, the <laughs> balance going through it. Uh, straw size, we'll kind of go in there. Just doing basic pitch glides, low to high. You could even do it in speech. Like if I were going to talk the three little bears and I was doing the three little, little voices of dad, mom, baby, that's not my porch, that's not my porch, that's not my porch. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> and also when you're using the straw, use, use the emotion that you would normally use. Like if you are ticked off and you want to show that you're ticked off in a presentation. Same energy. Or, I can't use her straw. You're good. I'll do it. But do, like, I'm mad, dang it. You Funny know? Up. Hey, I'm mad at you! <laughs> like whatever. You are never going to hurt your voice if you were doing that through a straw. And so if you can remember how that felt and do that same thing, when you do scream, it's not going to hurt. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And then add the cup. Add the cup so you can actually move your mouth and articulate to get in that same spot. So again, it's the tight seal and going out. So anyway, okay. anything else? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we did set up, um, I'll show you the last slide so you can kind of see our last kind of information. For more information on the straw, you can totally check it out um, for there. I also have set up a discount 
uh, for your guys' specific foundation. Um, and I'll put that as a slide at the end. There's a actual link that you can go to. Um, there's a discount for people who would want to purchase it. And then there's also a give back to your actual CF uh, foundation so that there can be money that goes into your charity. Um, hopefully we can get more research going on and, and how you guys can help. But we love answering questions. We love, you know, hearing different things, different thoughts. So if you have any questions, please, like you can totally follow us, DM us, kind of go through it. And I'll, again, have our information on the last slide. Um, but yeah, like for sure hit us up and we're here for you because we are all about advocating for a healthy voice, regardless of what the situation, circumstances or health concerns are. There's a lot of things that maybe you haven't thought of or that maybe we could help you with to go through it. And that's why it's important to have a really solid voice team um, moving forward. So anything else? Yeah, we just love you and we want to help <laughs> any yeah. way we can. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Have a fantastic rest of the conference and hopefully we'll see you soon. <laughs>